Hello everybody. It's time to do an unboxing of my first item for 2021. My first score. We'll open it up and see what it is. Tape is cut. Supposedly used, but Put back in its original box after a period of time. Got a canopy. No down rod. That's not a problem. Screws for the blades. The hook. Got a grommet. Well, here's the mounting U-hook. So that's always a plus and even came with a box. So that's uh, that's interesting. Gold triangle. That was a dollar something. I can't quite make the cents out. Can't make sense of the cents. Oh yeah, you don't want it uh, to unscrew. Four and a half turns in the set screw. Okay, see, I've never had an electrically reversible original. And as you can see, it's an early. Because it's still a Robbins and Myers. One point, early 1.1 1 .1 amp. God dang, that doesn't have a spot of dust in it. Have to take that out to the workshop and open it up and see what's going on here. But that is pretty cool. Give it no spin test. It's freed up, so that's that's an excellent sign. And if that was used, it was not used very long. I now have the 1985 Hunter original out in the workshop. Let's disassemble and see what it looks like inside. See what that shaft looks like. I've already taken this extension off that goes on the pull chain switch. I'll put that in my parts tube. I've got an O-ring. I'm going to go ahead and replace the O-ring in the in the switch housing. That took a trip. That comes loose. I'll put that out of the way. This one's got a, I guess I'll go ahead and check this capacitor. It's from November of 1984 and it's 7.5 microfarad. Go ahead and get the switch out and start getting the wires out of the way so we can take this switch out. Now it's time to disconnect the wires from the switch. And I am going to use a paper clip. And I'm just going to straighten out one end. And Press the contact in at 
the same time I'm pulling on the wire there just like that it'll release don't have to cut anything though I am before I go any further take a picture of where all the wires go on the switch I'll be right back and what I have done is taking the appropriate color sharpie and put a color mark right beside where each wire goes so I got a yellow dot there a red dot there I used a pencil to make a gray dot there and then I put a, a, a black dot right here but that that's L for line so that's pretty easy to remember anyway let us continue gray there's the yellow the red switch is out of circuit now I can continue disassembling let's take out these black wires we'll set those to the side take the capacitor out put a mark there as well just in case and I try to leave as much assembled as possible see all that still hooked together we'll set that aside I'll go ahead and test that in a little bit and now I should be able to take the switch housing off. Just as easy as can be. Let me get my light here. I'll take a look in there. It needs a little bit of cleaning. I'm going to go ahead and replace that O-ring down there and clean that out and make sure that's in good shape the bearing assembly looks pretty darn good it's got a clip that's new for 85 so I will get my appropriate tool out to deal with that and I've got my appropriate tool to deal with the clip squeeze it and it comes off no problem just got to have the right tools to do the job it's not a big deal set that to the side this bearing looks in wonderful shape I don't even think I need to do anything to it. I mean, that's just not a thing wrong with it. I'll check the old spiral groove next. I got to take the the vent plate off, and I'll come back when I do that. When I have that loose, right, ready to take the vent plate off. 
set that aside. And now the flywheel should just pop right out. That's in excellent shape. Well, I'm going to do a little polishing on it. And that's going to be about all this one needs. It's just about perfectly clean. It's a little while later and that shaft polished up nicely. Now what it's time to do is I'm going to make sure my oil my oil port is clear. And as you can see, it is clear. So that's good. I'll, I'll wipe down this inner surface a little bit now. Clean that up. And that should be ready to go. Let's see. My next step will be... I'm going to put a little oil on this shaft so it's not reassembled dry. I'm just going to take this and run all the wires through. And there it is. All good. put the bearing stack that doesn't even need to be cleaned it's already perfect just wipe it just a little bit Let's put the clip back on. It holds everything together. Again, not a big deal if you got the right tools. Get it in the groove. And there it is. Not too bad with the correct tool. Pierce. Double check it. Make sure it's in that. There it goes. Now it's snapped into the groove. I always want to make sure it's fully seated before proceeding. Let's check the capacitor while we're at it. Let's check the capacitor now. I've got a meter that works. Just probe one end and probe the other end. I'm going to come up with 6.12 microfarads. And this is a 10% tolerance. So that's that's a uh, borderline. Next, I'm going to uh, extract this O-ring. I got my pick right there, and I'm just going to get my light adjusted. I can extract that. Oh yeah, that sucker's pretty flat. 
and it just we'll see if we can get it into view I'm just going to work it out it'll eventually come on out There it comes. See that one's pretty flattened out. But I got this green one right here that'll work just fine. Okay, I'm going to press this O-ring back into place. I didn't like that first one I got, so I got another one out. Probably should have cleaned this before I put it in, but it's clean underneath where the O-ring seats, so it'll be fine. There it is. I'll go clean this up now with some LA is totally awesome. And I'm just going to pour the LA is totally awesome right in there. Get the wire, well the, it's not metal bristles. But it's good for scrubbing this out. The heat satisfied. So it's nice and quiet in here now. This little brush is just the perfect size to get down in there and get all that gunk cleaned out. Now I have to go out to the sink and wash it off. I'll be right back. And a little scrubbing with some LA's Totally Awesome and we are perfectly clean. Now to continue with reassembly. I'll take a rag and wipe this out here. Wipe out the excess oil. I'll poke all these back through. And left hand thread to tighten it back on. That's good and snug. Give this plate a quick wipe. It's not very dirty. There's a couple pieces of styrofoam from packing, so I wanted to make sure that was out. And I'll come back here when I get the screws put back in or all around the edge. Plates back on. Now let's get back into this switch housing. Get all these wires connected back to the switch. There's my red mark, so that just pushes back in. It's not hard. Not hard at all to do. There's the yellow. 
the gray. Goes back just like that. And now I will get the black wires and thread those back through. Cut the ends off, they'll go back through, fish back through easier. Parts can be a little tricky, so I'll come back when that's done. Got it. And there's that. Now I'm going to tuck these wires in and out of the way where the capacitor will go in. And there it is. Now I'll put the end cap back on it. And that will be that. All back together and I can give it a test it's a little while later I found a short down rod and I've got it hanging on my test my test J hook here's a look at the data tag and as you can see, it's from January of 1985. And we look at the top tag, it's a model 25572. And it is indeed a Robbins and Myers version. There's the reversing switch on top. And you can see the double row of windings. So let's, I've got it hooked up to the variable power supply and I've got it on about 70 volts. I've just been running it slow and testing it. It seems to be doing well. It reverses and everything just like it should. So there's not a problem there. I guess I'll let it run in reverse for a little while. I've put oh, almost a full capacity of oil in it. Not quite. Just enough to run it and get it all settled in. And I'll put some blades on it. And we'll do a test in part two. A test and demonstration of this. The blades I'm going to use are these reverse airs I found at a Habitat the other day. They were eight bucks, two bucks a blade, so that was a pretty good score. So thanks for watching.